I'm so excited. I've been so excited to, to create this for a while now and then to get started. It's so very nice. So you're the first interview. Hey, that's amazing. Yes. yes. Welcome to everyone listening, whoever is listening and watching. I'm Aninha and um, from Living with Integrity, which is a collaboration. I started with my friend Daniela to combine our strengths to move uh, forward with our interest and vision to create healthy communities with empowered individuals, which sounds so huge and simply put actually just means looking for ways to co-create nicer and kinder and healthier world to live in, where I can act and interact with integrity. And of course, this is an inter intention, an exploration of how to stay real and human with these ideals. And um, as you also know, Ali, um, I find this especially interesting in regard to relationships with some kind of power asymmetry. So like with clients or with children or with employees or students, but basically it's about the sense of being able to stand behind my actions regardless. Um, so I decided to ask people I find inspiring a couple of questions and to hear how they interact or how they see integrity in their lives or how also to think maybe together how we can make this subject that can be so big actually something that is practical and human. So today here with me is Ali Duarte and we met the first time in 2016 at the European Somatic Experiencing Conference where I was listening and you were one of the speakers. And then since then we've been having a lot of interesting conversations. One of which was you telling me that I will at some point also be a bigot, basically. You didn't use that word, <laughs> but you were saying, yeah, yeah, you just go and do things and you will do. Um, which of course I didn't like to hear, but I also think is very, probably very healthy to be reminded of. <laughs> um, so no further ado, I wanted to hear, if you want to say a few words about who you are, so people know that besides this little few words of mine. And then I will start with more questions. So who are you? Yeah, yeah, first of all, thanks for inviting me. I felt very uh, honored to be one of your your guests here. And uh, as soon as I uh, opened your email, I thought, oh, this is so great. I, I see that you do so many good things and I uh, really enjoy that. I, I enjoy your, your leadership in so many things. Thank so um, I'm a therapist and also teaching workshops and seminars. I uh, work basically with somatic, somatic intervention, somatic therapy. I, uh, I've been working with the human development for quite a while and I'm very fascinated and still curious about new things. Although I really go, uh, with this approach that somatic body oriented, I, I really appreciate the, the, the cognition and, and uh, critical thinking, everything that we need that when we trigger, this is like a create this very coherent and integrity being, you know, mm -hmm. talking about integrity. And I think we met in 2015, it was a little bit before, Really? Yes, I think it was uh, the the conference was in 2015 in Copenhagen. Yeah, it was in Copenhagen. That's true. Ah, so already three years. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I made a mistake there. Um, true. My first question is the biggest one, I guess. I don't know if it is the biggest one. Okay. What do you have a concept of what it means to live with integrity? What does it mean for you? Uh, I think has a lot to do with congruency, congruency with 
what you feel and what you see um, parts of your vision because we're not I don't I don't feel like a, a, I have a, a perfect vision that that I know what to do but I I think living with integrity is closer to the values closer to my limits um, maybe pushing a little bit the boundaries you know because that also comes with this inner desire of growth and do something do something do, uh, 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 do something in this world you know mm -hmm. and, and and i think that's um because integrity is, is such a tricky word because it can be taken in different directions mm -hmm. and you can think integrity as a um, if you think about an object, a car mm -hmm. that's missing a door is mm -hmm. lack of integrity or, mm -hmm. so you know already because when you purchase the car, you saw, okay, there's two doors and now there's only one. So you know yes. that something's missing. <laughs> yeah. But if you think integrity in this abstract way, more close to moral values and all the stuff, that has a lot of movement in, in itself so integrity is not exactly something that you you purchase so it kind of varies from people to people and because we are humans it changes and shift all the time mm -hmm. so this is part of my my idea about integrity and and uh, I, I i find myself when i got myself seeing my looking for integrity in myself in the same way as a look integrity in an in a object and then i think okay ali you're you're a little bit off it's something more to the other side <laughs> so you're missing a door is what you're saying mm. <laughs> if i think okay i'm missing a door or if i want something expect something that's supposed to be in that way like a manual or and um, and then I think, okay, it's not really quite that. It's something movable. It's not because you said that one day. Now you need to be with that forever. This is like mm -hmm. not written in a manual. So there is shift. We change. So I'm very. So like, if I understand, do I understand correctly that you're saying like what your values are is changing, and that means how integrity looks can change or mm -hmm. my perception of what integral changes mm -hmm. how i mean you work with the body a lot and you work with um you teach people about this stuff also no um, and how it, or is integrity like this sense of being integral or integer i don't know even know if you can say that like that in english but in german you can say i'm integer i'm mm. like acting with integrity mm -hmm. um do you have like a physical sensation that comes along with this sense of integrity or the opposite or the like the lack thereof hmm. that's a, such a great question um it does it does have that sense but it's really it goes fast because it, as soon as you feel that you feel that integrity for example I had a few moments in my life that I was i was um doing a work for example when i was doing a work there in thailand working with the disaster Mm -hmm. And uh, it was my first time in the field. I really want to do that. I was, I was, I want to work at UN. I want to work in those kind of environments. And then when I was invited, and I did the work, I remember going back to the hotel, and got in my email, and I thought, "Wow, this is exactly what I want to do in my life." Mm -hmm. So it was so much integrity. I can have the feeling here with me right now. Mm -hmm. Now, I do have the feeling here with me right now, but I don't want to do exactly that again. You know, I want something already shift. 
means, you don't want to do the the work in Thailand again, or what? Yeah, the way I uh, you... used to do, mm -hmm. I it's already changing in myself. So I like to help people in a different way, and I might not have the same feeling if I do the same thing. Mm -hmm. But by remember that, I see that was very, that was something, was very touched. Mm -hmm. And I have the feeling here with me, mm -hmm. but things are different now. Yeah. Um, oh, I forgot my question. Do you like, is there a, a place or like a specific sensation that you have in your body like an area of your body that you feel particularly or a set like a kind of sensation that feels for you like when you are in a place in a situation you're like yes this is what i want or this is feels kind of mm. Mm -hmm. yes i think yes i do feel it could be in my chest it could be in my mind together there was this mm -hmm. sense of alignment, mm -hmm. alignment with my heart, alignment with my whole body. There is a small, there's this smile that comes together. Mm -hmm. This smile that is, it's like, wow, this is, I'm close to something special. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, I really know when I'm doing something that's not aligned. I'm not integrating to that piece. I'm kind of has lots of compromising and um, I, I feel like going to this effort mode. I'm doing things with more effort. Mm -hmm. And the other one is effortless. So you feel even the breeze coming inside yourself, if metaphorically speaking. So mm -hmm. uh, um, even when you, you hear someone talking and you say, wow, this is match. Oh, this is great. Mm -hmm. You have so much validation inside yourself in a way that you feel heard. You feel, yes, I, I belong to this kind of conversation. You know, I belong to this kind of gesture. It, it, your body embraces that and then feel that. So the chest, the arms, um, the energy start to flow. It's not rigid. Mm -hmm. Also, it's not too fluffy, you know, a mm -hmm. hot air balloon. You feel some kind of buoyancy in the body. Mm -hmm. um, and since you mentioned this car with the door, uh -huh. um, and like when talking about integrity, sometimes I find like it can become this almost like imperative. I have to live with integrity and I have to like, especially looking at the world where people are like, where there are so many places where it's like, ah, no, this is really not in line. This person is really speaking in a way that you're, um, so the, like the imperative of living with integrity can come almost like having to be perfect or like having to, uh, be as perfect as we want other people to be <laughs> when we them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i find sometimes it can be almost like uh then mm, mm, slowing me down or slowing this kind of sense of flow because i'm always checking am i making a mistake here or there or there <coughs> uh breaching this my own integrity mm -hmm. and i like there are two questions in this rambling uh, one is, do you know this sense as well in some situations? And two is, how do you deal with this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very important points. Um, living with integrity doesn't mean you don't need to break rules. And for today in this world and things that, uh, things that goes fast in this complexity, I think is imperative is to break rules and break rules most of the time create discomfort from the other side and then therefore you might feel that but you i am still in, uh, integral with my values in some ways mm -hmm. or having a vision that is um, holding so it 
it's important to feel discomfort also as long as you know there is congruency and you're not harming um i cannot say not harming others because the other person that you're breaking the rules might not be satisfied <laughs> but but in some ways uh one must to change the the rules you know and especially mm -hmm. if these rules really imply um a group protection and um, uh, um, a situation that is not progressive or maybe even change the group. Maybe it's not your, it's not your game, it's not your toy. You need to move on um, and move on and give up also to keep our integrity is important. So mm -hmm. I, I, this is, this is what I think this, uh, the integral is, is breaking rules as well mm -hmm. and not conforming. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. You said to me at some point, um, Aninha, it's no fun playing with other people's toys. You have to build your own. This sentence really stuck with me. Um, and I find that like, what you just said reminds me of it again. <laughs> it's true. Um, it's, and it's kind of... Uh, like interesting because you before when you were speaking about how it feels or how you sense integrity in your own body it comes with this sense of flow and smile but i think for many people like this discomfort that you describe now can feel as if it's in conflict with feeling happy or feeling this smile or something like that right mm -hmm. yes it, it, it's counterintuitive. Mm. Mm. We cannot forget that sometimes we, we have a call inside ourselves. And this call is it's way bigger than what's happening right in front of you. And, um, and this call also, is, it can be very confusing for who is hearing. Like if something, if I know that something is important for me in SLA, you, you got had this step right now I'm in the middle of a transition. So for me to listen to that and make this change, I not only have um, this certainty inside myself, but lots of uncertainties mm -hmm. and who wins this, this battle. <laughs> I try to make at least 51% for, for the, <laughs> from one side that's pulled me forward, mm -hmm. but I do have, I will be, uh, every change I do, I have a part of me that's grieving. It's really grieving. Mm -hmm. There is no transformation change without grieving. So every time you st step forward, I see like the image of myself crying a little bit, like my body crying a little bit. But at the same time, I need to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, you see, it's not like a putting the door back to the car. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Maybe you need just to cry because the door is gone and then that's it. I now have a new integrity. <laughs> I'll have a third door. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. I wonder if it's to integrate the part that you are human and not the car. Which yes. is, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> it, I mean, and this, I don't know, I would say I remind myself of, I try to, being human is also hurting sometimes like mm -hmm. being, having this part that is grieving right or it is you can have a uh, uh you cut yourself or something and then you also you like the integrity is also broken in one like the, the integrity of your skin is broken <coughs> yeah but the integrity of you as a person is not because you as a person also entail the ability to heal Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's what I make this, this analogy with the car, because one is very factual. You mm -hmm. see, I have a cut. And it's undeniable just looking at, you see the, the, the cut in the arm or the scar. But at the same time, when you say, I have a cut in my heart, it's very abstract. But we don't know yes. exactly what does it mean, you know? 
and this abstraction is is where we um, for some you have a, a different um, understanding of what's happening but we know what's really I my heart is broken but I feel like I'm doing the right thing do you know moments where you can feel that there is something off but you don't know what it is if I feel uh, it if I have to do something off, but I don't know exactly what like, it is. It's like something that you feel like, okay, your integrity is not uh, given, or you feeling like there's, yeah, yeah, something like, but, but you don't know what it is. Well, I'm a master of that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I do this all the time. <laughs> all the time. Those are the voices of the 49% voices, you know, <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> so I'm gonna close the window here. So it's um, just a second. There is a construction here. Hmm. So I do have those voices. <sighs> and they are really, sometimes they're really loud. But I think with the experiences of, of my intention and checking in with my intention, I have a, I, I do give some credit for, for what I want to do, you know. When I don't listen to that, I immediately feel that's not integral. Something's really missing. Mm -hmm. And do you have a practice that or like a practical process of how you find out like or how you move towards more flow mm -hmm. again or more clarity yeah, I, I do and this is not so much only myself uh, for this kind of practices i would call not practices but i i do go to my therapy I do therapy when, I, when I'm, I'm moving or when I'm transforming or changing something. I not only have a therapy, but I have like a two or three coaches. So sometimes I have two, two t types of therapy and three kinds of coachings because I know there's something so complex. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I cannot live without this reflection, especially because when I start to listen to myself, myself, myself only, Ooh, <laughs> I, I stop not trusting my own voices, mm -hmm. you know. So you use another person or you interact with another person to find the blind spots or find out where is it that you were caught in something that doesn't move? Yes, weekly. Mm -hmm. What I mean weekly is weekly. Mm -hmm. um, I, do, I do meditate. Mm hmm not as much as I would like to, but when I feel so much noisy in my, in my perception, I need to rest and stay with myself and close my eyes and meditate for 20 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever is available in the moment. Um, but only that I don't think would work for me because there's so much decision make, making in, mm -hmm. involved that um, I need to get somebody else's perspective, especially people that is not so involved into the situation that I'm in. Mm -hmm. um, that was really helpful for me, for my integrity, you know, and uh, to have endurance in change. Like a, if, you, if I want to change once and it, is, it doesn't work well, the second time, I'm going to think twice and do it. The third time, I'm going to say, well, it's better to stay here <laughs> for a long time. But this isn't, I don't like that. I think I didn't understand. When you want to change what? When what? When you want to make changes in, in life decisions mm -hmm. or you are um, to keep yourself integral. Most of the time, you 
you need to create changes. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if I have bad experiences in changing, next time when I try to change again, my body, my, my mind will say, uh oh, it's not reliable. So mm -hmm. I, every change, I need to go through different kind of reflections, type of reflections for me to say, okay, I make this change based on something concrete. I was not by impulse. Mm -hmm. I talked to experts. I talked mm -hmm. to people that is involved. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the decision making of, um, of being integral, you know, Mm -hmm. It's actually really interesting what you just said as a contrast to the car image uh -huh. because you said to stay integral, we have to, you have to stay changing, mm -hmm. which is in a car, you want the opposite. You want the car to stay the same, no? Yes. To stay integral. <laughs> you don't want it to constantly change, like, because it's yes. annoying. But I think like as a human, maybe what we need to do is to constantly continue to change is what I hear. From yes, uh, exactly. That's the, the deal. And especially when you look at the other, you have to have the same thing. You need to let them change. If you want them to be in that way, it's because I'm not changing. My eyes not changing. And then I feel this, being integral as a pact, as a, as a, um, uh, um, as, a, as an object that has features that works and needs to last forever, you know? And, um, and then things doesn't work. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> I cannot change. The other one cannot change. If someone change, okay, you lose the integrity. You gotta go back to the to default mode. No, no, that's not not possible. But sometimes that sounds like it, no? Like there's this, I don't know. I know that when I started to do this kind of therapy work, body work, empowering people, I had mm -hmm. this uh, belief that at some point I will like be able to do my whole body and like then when I have fulfilled all of these things I'm attentive and I'm reflective and I'm aware of other people and like in a way I have this uh, idea that I will and then I will stay like that mm -hmm. always changing and always interactive and reflecting and da -da -da, like in a way um like I find sometimes when I looked at, at teachers or at uh, other people that I find inspiring that I put on them this idea that, okay, they've been inspiring once or they've been acting with integrity once, they should always be doing that. And then not allowing them in a way to actually stay human and to continue to explore mm -hmm. and make mistakes and maybe part of this exploration around integrity is, is also looking at the places where I'm not managing to be living within, like where I do make, make mistakes or where I have regrets in some way and have this part of grief mm. Mm. and maybe shame. I don't know if there's also mm -hmm. something about uh, like, because it would be so nice if I can also, I always act in integrity. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to look at the questions anymore. Yes. And uh, you add a new element to this conversation, which is the expectation. Mm -hmm. um, so well, how much the being integral or expecting the other one to act in one way and when they surprise us it's like okay we are confronting with this sort of changes here that that was not part of my deal you know 
mm-hmm. the, the beginning of the deal that I made it. So what I'm gonna do with this? I when I'm confronted to that, I uh, I definitely need to see first. I really I really check into my values or the whole values that I have. If something goes really against my values, and I for example, I was doing a training and then this training uh, was very good, very, very good training. And at the same time, I could see that the whole group was moving to a different kind of um, behavior, like create this kind of in-group and out-group. Mm-hmm. And um, and I don't like this kind of, of uh, this dynamic will happen, but I don't like when the facilitator don't see that or really feed into that in group all the time so i i start to feel bad and at the same time i start to struggle and want to make a change want to change that Mm -hmm. but it was not possible something was way bigger than my desire you know Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I didn't want to settle into that because there was something about uh, how much you value the other one, how much you see, how much you hear. So I thought if I, if I stay with this, um, I will not be integral here. I will finish the training and not feel happy. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if I leave, I will not... I will not feel good because I don't like to quit things, you know. Ah. And then I had to find a different directions. Mm-hmm. Interesting know? dilemma. Totally I don't like believe uh, between a belief about yourself. I don't quit things and uh, wish to be integral. Exactly. Mm. Isn't it isn't it crazy? So how can you be integral if you have one side a tiger, another one a lion? both hungry. <laughs> yeah so, so i okay. think i i i really i really stop and I, I did my my habit or my my practice of listening to others you know and i i got into this conclusion that uh, what i was feeling is not inadequate what i was feeling is i mean i supposed to feel that Mm-hmm. But now I did not have the skills to do something about it, or I, I could not move the ship. So I, 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 I start to go meta, you know, I start to go to the level, not as a participant, but I go to the level as, as a one that's doing consulting, as one that's doing a different kind of approach, because I, I believe what I was doing is really good. But there was a mistakes that was very prim- primary mistakes. So um, we make a deal and, and everything works, works out. And I felt really integral after that because I didn't quit. I didn't buy to the, to the I didn't have to fight the tiger or the lion. Mm-hmm. I find a third solution. And this is... Um, it was such a, an inspiration, but I grieve. I was not easy for me. Mm. I fight. I complained. I did everything that people don't like it. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Find some enemies, broke some rules. But the end was really worth it for both sides. And I think that's a, such a great, such a great experience I had for myself. It was interesting because this also it included that you had to change your role in this setup that you were in, right? You were you came mm-hmm. with the expectation of being a participant, mm-hmm. in a way a recipient of someone else take care of the situation. Mm-hmm. But to really, it sounds like to really get something out of it and to be there with integrity, you needed to take action in some way influence yes. the the whole the like the whole community that you were in and who exactly. would have thought like it could have been that this teacher didn't like your input and then you were anyway out but um uh-huh. nice and 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 i think it's, it's really well 
really well uh, summarized by by you right now and i i was really careful because also there's another part of this integrity movement that i was doing there which is i didn't want to be in a competition of the teacher uh -huh. because that's not my role yeah and um and that's what i see that people sometimes they complain and they want to be in a competition of someone that's there in a the position. But that also doesn't work. That's a part of the, the play somebody else's toy. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to play with their toy. I want to take out a pay for, the, for the, 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 this thing, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. I, want to be, I want to be the participant. Mm -hmm. So we have very good agreement and it was really good, really nice. I absolutely enjoy it. Great. Um, let me check my question there. Um, uh, that, yeah, one question that I wanted to ask you is um, in your, because I want <coughs> this one workshop that you did where you were um, sharing a tool of working with children and their parents. Mm -hmm. And this, I know that this really changed the way that I play with children, like noticing their. Um, these waves that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but I would wonder if you had any thoughts of your, from your work with these parents, for example, and the, mm -hmm. their children. I, because from, like, I saw this as really about the different integrities, like the parent and the child in a way they need, they, they look for a way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I, yeah, this was my perspective, but I just wanted to hear if you have thoughts mm. on from your work with, with parents and children, especially. Yes, uh, I, you know, lately I'm, I'm working, working closer to, to parents. Um, my, my experience was a lot about working with therapists and direct with children or adults. And I want to get more closer to the parents to create this, you know, like a bridge that goes straight to the, to the parents and the child. And I can see, basically because I can see uh, parents are confused, are confused about the, um, to be integral with their children, but at the same time to be integral with their profession in a work that is demanding so much, demands so much performance in the competition, they got to be present in order to be able to, you know, to feed their family, to fulfill their needs. So it, it, it creates this very conflicting experience because um, they want the best for the child, but at the same time, rushing the child in a way that the child loses integrity. Mm -hmm. Or or taking so much care or, or the opposite, that child lose integrity. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when you, you work with the child, when you stay with the child, it means that you lose your self integrity. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a lot of conversation to do with that. A lot of conversation to, to, um, to clear. And, and parents' mindset and how they see children. Because as soon as they see the child um, in, with a simple eye and very appreciative eye, things are moving more in this automatic pilot. Both can have integrity. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more about doing less than doing more. Mm -hmm. Uh, and everything starts with the, the mindset of or the premises that the child needs my care. Yes, yes, it does need your care. But how much, when, and um, what would be the most appropriate ways of, of, of helping the child, especially the ones in need. Mm -hmm. And some kids, they have so much resilience. They don't need so much um, attention in a way the, to taking care, but more how to be with them in the progressive mindset, in their creative mindset. 
Mm-hmm. They, they, they can create the whole world. And for us adults to be with them, I always surprise. What they do is like a, as soon as stepping out and observe and participate with appreciative eye, they create things that go beyond my, my imagination. Mm-hmm. And this is like a be so much integral with a child in a sense of uh, with idea the concept of a new thing for this world. That's what we need. So much things a child has that we don't need to format them, but at the same time learning with them and vice versa. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if I explain well, but I see this this dance parents and child in a way that is is like a dance. Mm-hmm. You are a dancer, you know how that, that works, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, the basic of a dance is that you need two partners that participate or that are whole and not, at least for me, when it is fun, the dance is fun mm-hmm. when both are actually whole as in their, dif- they, of course they have different roles, but they need each other. And it's not one, like if as soon as one person starts to lead without listening, mm-hmm. it's no fun anymore. Or the other way around, listen, not listening, just blah, blah, blah. So imagine do that, leading without listening for 14 years. Can you imagine? I uh, stay the whole the whole childhood until teen with this mindset of I need to do something for them. I need to. They should do this way. They should dance in this way. So mm-hmm. it's not fun anymore. The good thing is that the child has so much space inside themselves. They 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 come with this word that I want to love my parents. Mm-hmm. So that gives so much joy and they are saying, okay, okay, I compromise you. They have a lot of space for compromising, <laughs> but wow, it could be something a little bit more flexible. A dance with both sides are leading. Mm. Um, I think we could probably talk uh, like for three more days or so, mm-hmm. <laughs> helping from one subject to another, but I, would like to have this, uh, maybe a round up uh, um, this call or this video interview, whatever you want to call it, um, and ask you if you have like something to share with people who are who will listen to this or who are watching our conversation, any kind of practice or simple tool that you use. Mm-hmm. either with yourself or with your clients but I think most interesting would be for yourself like speaking from your experience mm-hmm. to get to this sensation of being whole mm-hmm. like in moments when there are this kind of dilemma like how do you get from ah I'm stuck or I'm I feel this mm, weirdness to going back into flow if you have anything mm-hmm. like that well I well, thanks for the opportunity. <sighs> I don't have a, a practice like I said before, um, but I I do have some principles. In one is like a, I have I I have ownership of my a hundred percent ownership of my responsibility. So whatever I choose to do, um, that put me in this integral mode, the integral uh, state or not, it's really up to, up to my responsibility. And, um, and I think the practices, the practice that I think is, is consider seeking perspective of people that you, you admire or you, um, find that relevant for what you're doing and can bring in bring it can bring t- to you the sense of integrity again 
so the, I think this is a practice, not do yourself. It, it's kind of practice because it's easy to go into your own bias and then and do some practices without the reflection, is, is especially have someone to talk with. Um, and for sure, doing some meditation and all things like this to clear your mind. Mm. But first of all, uh, considered seeking perspective. I think that's uh, so important. This is ability, this is a skill, it's a humbled. It's, um, <laughs> it's, to be humbled is, <laughs> is considered that kind of skill, especially in this enormous um, array of, of possibility that life can bring us to, you know, it's, nobody has a recipe in this world. People can be very clever, but they don't have recipe. Mm. Let's create our own recipe. <laughs> 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 yes, let's do that. Um, thank you. I think that's a very great way to end the <laughs> recording. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you for joining today, Ali. And uh, I'm very curious to share this with the world soon and then see, see this spread and see people start thinking more and taking perspectives. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, Anina. It was such an honor to be here and to speak to your group, um, crowd, your... Thank you. I feel, feel really good, honored to be here. Great. Thanks and goodbye.